Hey, hi everybody, it's Mark Hanna with Hothead Thundermouth Gaming Productions. Nice to see all of you. Or uh, Anyway, as usual, coming to you unscripted, unapologetic, uncensored, and psychologically immune from social media scoring. I'm here today to do what I'm going to call, look at this, St. Miraglis. This is unopened, folks. I have not looked inside this treasure. So I've got another one I'm going to do too, but I don't know if I'll do them in the same video or not, as they're kind of disparate subjects. Let's stick with this one. An MMP product, St. Miraglis, Drop Zone St. Miraglis. Okay. Uh, you can see that image there at the front. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wanted to open this up and comment on it on a couple of things. Uh, okay, so back cover here. This is what, you know, the tantalizing parts of the game. Um, right, so the first thing that you see, of course, is this new map that they're talking, obviously, the drop zone itself is being featured. That's great. We love historical maps. I love historical layouts. Just fantastic idea that. Okay, that's a given. Um, next thing here, Drop Zone St. Mergles is historical, covering the first two days. Okay, can we hold on to the town? Can the Germans retake the town? And with all of that commentary, what you see, sorry there, you see that? Okay, I don't know if it's going to come into focus here with my webcam. This is a cow marker. Cows have three movement points, apparently. I don't know if they're movement points or movement factors. Uh, you know, that's a distinction because perhaps you can mount cows in the game. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, cows, huh? Now, I wonder why only St. Miraglis has cows in all of ASL, but um, uh, no doubt since 1989 or whenever ASL came out that we've all been missing the cow counters. Uh, another thing that's a little bit annoying are these 537s. Can you see that? 537. I uh, can't get it in there. There, 537s. Uh, now, for some reason, they decided, I don't know why, they've added a new second line 537 counter to the German OB. After all these years, and so I'm sure there's some kind of a explanation for that. Let's dig into this a little bit. Let me pause this. I'm going to open this. I guess I should, for the sake of proof, you know, get out my combat knife. There you are. And uh, open it up in front of you. There's no hidden agendas here. I have not resealed this. This is totally impromptu. Don't know what I'm getting into right here. St. Marigli's box opening. Okay. All right, now, of course, the first thing that you always do when you open up the box, I think all of you should know, okay, that, you know, uh, let's put on my combat glasses. Uh, Stu calls these my uh, butt hurt glasses. I think that's hilarious. You can see my badge of honor here. Oh, it's this side. That's right. I won that in a tournament. First place, beating Fish Connor for first place. Not many people can say that. In fact, very few can say that. I'm sure of it. Anyway, Drop Zone, St. Mariglis, Advanced Squad Leader. This is a nice note that MMP always puts in. Uh, it tells you what you have with the game. It contains a box with a lid. Three map sheets. Oh, there's three of them. Okay. That's pretty big. I didn't know that. A counter sheet, 11 scenarios. Nice. A new chapter and two chapter dividers. That's what comes in here. Right. So then we got to count this and make sure that we have all of our new pages here. Uh, well, okay. Uh, 28 pages of rules. Okay. So it starts with SM1 to SM26, and then I guess the 27th and 28th pages 
are these playing sheets here that I'm sure are on here someplace. Have they stopped doing that? I love it when these games say, you have permission to copy this for your personal use. Um, yeah, actually, publishers, we always have the right to make an archival copy of anything that we own. So you don't have to give us permission to do that. Uh, in fact, it looks like they've stopped. I'm very proud of MMP for stopping that malarkey. Every, they always include one of these. I think it's a spacer so that the ink doesn't get on the maps. So that's good. But uh, I don't know. My environmentalist friends, I don't know. They might have an issue with this. I mean, after all, we're wasting paper here. Um, anyway, we've got the three maps. I have a northeast map here. Okay, nice big map. A lot of hedgerows, it looks like. These look like approach. It's really big. Okay. A lot of terrain here, mostly hedgerow farm areas. Then it goes into the divider. I guess this is for the campaign game force organizer. That's fine. Then the SA map is here. Okay. SA map. Right. Looks very similar. Let's see if. Uh, Yes, this one, this is the one that has St. Mariglise on it. This is going to be probably the central map, I imagine. And then there better be another map in here. Yep, here it is. They separated them out in weird ways. Not sure why. And then the F.A. map. Strange nomenclature, guys. Not map. SM1, SM2, SM3. Why do that? Why would you want to have anything... As logical as that. And this is similar. These are more cultivated, smaller hedgerows, maybe, with a village there. Okay, nice. Okay, so 28 pages of rules. All right, so we look at these counters, and I want to thank MMP. So unlike these wasteful game companies that trim the corners for you, uh, here, there, they make an excellent use of all the real estate possible on the counter sheet. Very environmental, very thoughtful, great DEI on their part, or uh, CVA, or whatever it's called. Uh, anyway, so we have all these kind of. Oh, something fell out. Looks like I'm missing one glider. Not so sure why I need new gliders. I guess they they must have needed more than were operating in the actual counter sheets themselves. And I don't know where this missing glider is. Maybe it's in the it's in the box. Okay. So here, where are my cows? Here we go. All right, three cows plus one TEM for these three cows, and these on the other side are dead cows. And dead cows apparently are only hindrances. Uh, now look, I take a bit of an offense here at using these cow markers. And I think there's rules in here that are a bit outrageous for this. I mean, I, I really, you know, I appreciate the integrity of these designers. I think it was Ken Dunn who was one of the guys that did this. I don't know where I saw that. It must have been someplace else. But, uh, come on, cows. But, you know... They have a whole rule section three on cows. You know, never before have we had to deal with herd animals in ASL. Okay, but here they are, section three cows. Right here, cows. A cow, unit size number four, in case you weren't sure about the unit size number, uh, may be possessed by an infantry MMC, maximum of one cow per MMC. Okay. Uh, a cow may never be hidden, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, T, M, and LOS hindrance. Elimination. Uh, you may kill the cow at any time uh, by the possessing MMC. Cow slaughter rules are included in ASL now. Okay. I know you've been waiting for that. 
Uh, dead cows. Uh, okay, they have an example of how dead cows occur. Okay, now this is the rule I really despise. The minefield clearance. Now, I'd like to see... There's not a note here. Where's the note? Is there a note? I'd like to see the citation where scads of units all across Normandy were using cows as minefield clearance. Now, I don't doubt, okay, that <laughs> it was probably done. I, I think you should at least have to take a task check or something before you do a, a cow slaughter risk maneuver. But anyway, an MMC possessing a cow in a minefield hex. First, you have to get in the hex. Okay. Automatically creates a tail braze across the hex side crossed when entering the hex and any other hex side of that hex. Any other hex side. This is actually better than a tank. Cows, uh, a cow counter will clear a trailblaze better than tanks will. Okay. Well, maybe. No, no, maybe I misunderstood. Hex side crossed and any other hex side. Because apparently the cows know which hex side you're sending them. Cow, hex side here. Cow, hex side there. Straight ahead, hex side cow. Okay. Uh, so it's automatically successful clearance. Um. Uh, the MMC doesn't even become TI. Apparently, they're just standing around with their cow whips, you know, getting those cows out there in the minefield. Okay. Uh, pretty impressive here. However, it does cost you. You you create from this a dead cow. Now, apparently, the cow, if it even if it hits a minefield three feet away, it still has enough empowerment to walk all the way across the 40-meter hex to continue to create a trailblaze while dead all right okay this rule belongs with the piper rules of asl okay very sorry ken dunn but come on man okay now they have a campaign game here now i'm not going to play with the cows i refuse to play with cows if you want to win an automatic victory because we're supposed to play with these cow rules Choose one of these scenarios with cows, challenge me to it, and automatically win. Probably be the only way you'll automatically win against me uh, or anybody else. But anyway. Okay, so cow rules dispensed with. Uh, there were some other rules here that I wanted to talk about. I've got my rules all out of order here. This is what happens when you don't rehearse what you're doing. Okay, the other comment I had was these new MMCs for the German, the new second line here. These are called Sturm MMCs, represented by 531s. Okay. Uh, heat of battle. Okay, they, these battle hardened to 548s. You know, I guess there, there's a sort of a logic to that. Okay, so... Um, I don't know what happens to them when they fail ELR. Uh, do they go to conscripts? They may use flamethrowers and DCs as if they're elite. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, neither the heat of battle now heat of battle nor ELR replacement can transform a non-Sturm MMC into a Sturm MMC. And then they have note number one. All right, cool. Let's see the justification for this. This in-depth justification for the special MMC. Let's see here. Here we go. Starting in 1943, many German army level commands established training locations to teach specialized attack tactics. They were well armed uh, and taught with a wide variety of special weapons. Now, as usual, these notes from MMP don't come with any citations. So we're just supposed to believe the experts that did the design know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, all right, let's cut, let's cut them a little slack on that. 
Okay. Uh, so initially we tried to use five, four, eight squads, but their high morale was too powerful. All right. Uh, five, four, sevens. They said no. They thought carefully about this, and so they settled on five, three, sevens. Okay. Some playtesters commented, ah, here we go, on the fact that a 537 was replaced by a 436 and that subsequently battle hardened would end up as a 447. In most situations, a 537 will be more valuable than a 447. Uh, so we felt that uh, it was too hard to do bork keeping, which is really kind of funny considering that 99% uh, of players are actually playing with vassal which could easily keep track of something like that um but it's too cumbersome to burden players with it would be probably for regular players who only play on real maps and things like that we'd actually have to you know keep track of things but not with vassal vassal which dumbs down players you could easily do this all right Oh boy, oh boy. I've stepped in it now. Sorry, Stu. Got to get the butt hurt glasses on. I'm telling you, okay? Vassal dumbs you down. You need more skill to play on a real map with real counters. All right. So those are my only two complaints here about this. I'm never really against having new types of counters here. I think it's a bit much to make us feel stupid that we can't keep track of something like this. And they even point this out. Nevertheless, players wishing to undertake the accounting effort may wish to battle harden any 436 that it used to be a Sturm to a 537. I think that's a good, I'm glad they put that in. You got to go all the way to the footnotes to figure this out but it's in there. So optional rules in the footnotes. Also not a good idea. The optional rules should be uh, input in the rules, the body of the rules, okay? Guys, getting sloppy over there, getting a little sloppy. Okay, let's take a quick look at these scenarios here. I should have 11 of these babies. Taking a look. Okay, I'll be very disappointed if I don't have 11 scenarios here. SM1, 3, presumably 2's on the back side of 1. There's 5, RAF again, 7, one man wrecking machine. That must be John Wayne. When he was in the movie, there, John Wayne was in there, you know, so he was probably the guy. Uh, Confusion Reigns? Oh. That's interesting. This is a remake of an existing ASL scenario from Paratrooper. Nice. Be interested to play that. Okay. Then we have... Ooh, so it goes from 9 to 11 on the back side of 11. Okay, then 10 is a 2-player. Okay. Nice. This is all fine. So let's just take a quick look. I want to take a look at these VC. Um, I'm quite particular about two things lately about scenarios. First is the turn length, the game length. I mean, you know, I'm starting to see scenarios that are four and a half turns, five and a half turns. Look, five and a half turns is kind of my limit. If you're going to put the forces together uh, so close that you're going to end this thing in four and a half turns, five and a half turns, go play deluxe ASL. Okay, play deluxe. I want some room for maneuver in my scenarios. If I'm playing on big maps, I don't make it four turns. It's just too much. Um, okay, lost opportunities. First VC. They win immediately upon exiting eight exit VP, provided they still have in play plus the number of squad equivalents they've exited and is never less than five. Every two buildings. Okay. Complex VC, but it doesn't seem like it's too prone to a last-minute dash. Although, if you do have to exit um, on the last turn, you're going to have a mad dash for the exits. Okay? Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Uh, victory conditions for Scenario 2. 
Americans win a game end by having greater than one unbroken MMC in a hill hex, provided the Germans amass less than 12 VP. Uh, okay. All right. Five and a half turn scenario. Uh, in this particular scenario, there's eight German squads and nine uh, American squads. Uh, this this particular scenario wouldn't meet my criteria for a tournament scenario because it's got less than 10 NMC per side and it's going to be too dicey. But it might be fun to play. I probably will never play it, though. The Roadblock, Scenario 3. Okay, 7 American squads versus 19 German squads and 2 tanks. We do have a AT gun plus a Roadblock, but this is going to be Hugely dicey, as if anything bad happens to a decent American stack, um, the Germans are going to run right through there uh, already. This is a dog. I won't play that. Okay, dog by my standards, right? Oh, God. Man, I might have offended somebody. By my standards, uh, you know, I really shouldn't express my own opinion in a harsh manner because, it is, you know, sensitive people are out there. Um, SM3. No, doesn't meet the standard. SM4, Raf's Dilemma. Okay, this has 10, 13, and 9 plus some vehicles. This, this has got a decent OB on each side. Looks good. Six and a half turns. This meets the criteria. Victory conditions. They win at game end if there are no German good order non-crew MMC at level 1. All right, so this is one of those weird VC that I'd like to comment on here. You know, the problem I have with this uh, is that, um, now, hold on a second. I'm going to test my, test my audio a bit here. Hold on. Let me uh, end this segment. All right. I'm back here. I don't know if I reversed this. Yeah, okay. All right. So um, you can see a little bit more of my screen behind me because I didn't adjust the window very much behind me on this side the other side the other this side you can see my setup for Axis Empires there in the middle of 19 I think it's 42 now getting onto winter 1941-42 um, you also see my couch and my window all right I could use a green screen here or something, but I'm keeping this simple here. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time mucking around with the editing of this. Um, in some future ones, I will. I'm going to make more effort here. All right, Raf's Dilemma. Okay, as I was trying to say, SM4, you've got this clearance, like this non-good order criteria. Um, I... <laughs> Not really sure what this is supposed to represent here. Um, you know, well, you can tie them up in melee or you can break them, but you don't have to get the buildings themselves. You can shoot them up, and if they're all broken, or you can get them in melee, but you don't win the melee, but they're in melee, then they're not in good order. Okay, so that also satisfies it. Also, don't count the crews. The Germans have three crews. Okay. <laughs> so that means the gun. <laughs> that means the guns. There's a 50, a 75, and an anti aircraft gun. All of these can be fully occupied and manned and blasting away at any Americans that are on that hillock, whatever, wherever it is. And, uh,. <laughs> that wouldn't count against the victory conditions. Um, I do not like victory conditions like this. Uh, it's a bit gimmicky, but it means is, look, we can't really figure out how the Americans are really going to take this hill. We're not going to give them three extra squads or something so they can take the hill. What we're going to do is just make sure everything's broken except for the guns. It's okay that the guns are still manned by their crews. Obviously, that's not the intent, and obviously, you know, if you've got these guns shooting at you, you're probably going to try to take them out, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. It's not, uh, it's not a sensible VC. I really think all VC should have some element of time adjustment that we don't know when the scenario ends, 
So there's no last minute charge that would happen in a scenario like this. Always going to be a situation where, oh, there's one guy left over here. Uh, we're going to have to charge three squads at him and hope one of them makes it in and hope one of them gets in. Um, if you didn't have an exact ending to the scenario, you wouldn't play it like that. That's not really how uh, combat was done. So problem there with that. Okay. Uh, so variable turn ending would be one thing. Variable VC would also be good. Um, I'd like to see more of that in these designs. Um, the trend, I like the scenario length. Though. Six and a half turns is a really good length for a scenario. Um, eight, uh, there's a sweet spot there, six and a half to eight. You start getting to nine, they start to becoming like an old school scenario. If, if it's a nine turn scenario, you need a couple turns of entering from off map and getting to into position, which I do like. It certainly adds a lot of time to the scenario play. But at least, you know, you're not prematurely configured and the defender really has to think. Um, I think those scenarios, though, are a little bit more pro-attacker because the defender, if they do make a mistake, they, uh, they really can't recover from it. Um, anyway, Ras Dilemma. Yeah, I like the looks of it. Other than the VC, that, that would be played. Okay, then we got uh, Raf's Distress. Boy, Raf is busy around here, isn't he? I think some of there's another bunch of RAF scenarios that uh, got published. Maybe these are remakes. RAF's distress looks like they're coming in by glider. Uh, yeah, twelve squads coming in, nine squads defending. This is a decent size, seven and a half turns. Uh, and here, I'm not really sure I understand it. They've they've got this huge map F A which is a historical map, they've cordoned off here. I'll show you. They've cordoned off a sector in the middle and their exit VC. So you're actually exiting from the cordoned off area onto the map that already exists. It seems to me something happened here in the idea behind these, these VC here. I would imagine it might be due to the fact they're trying to keep these turns, uh, turn amounts low uh, or something like that. But you got to enter, uh, exit off the north edge of map FA. Uh, but it's not all the way off of map FA. It's just off the middle of map FA onto the northern part of map FA. I haven't put these maps together yet, but I assume that north of map FA might be St. Marigli's. I mean, I'm sure there's some good historical reasons for that. Again, um, you know, you have the danger of a last minute mad dash to the exits, um, a fixed turn end, which wouldn't be really historical in a tactical war game. I don't think that makes sense anymore. Uh, but, you know, ASL's kind of got that embedded in it. It's showing its age, but, the you know, the it's getting worn around the tooth, ASL, but not so bad that, you know, People don't still love, I still love it. I still love the game. I just think, you know, these VC can be refined to be a little more exciting. Maybe add some random events too. That will be really hard to balance the scenarios. But to be honest, do you really think these designers know how to balance scenarios? Maybe, maybe I'm showing a little too low in faith on that. Maybe these scenario designers, and I think Ken Dunn's one of the best ones. He designed Raft's Distress here. I've played him and I've played his scenarios and I like them. So, uh, Anyway, this is, looks looks like a butte. Uh, okay, that's Raf's Distress, SM6, Sound and Fury, right here. Uh, okay, I won't play this. Only six uh, American squads uh, for the Defender. Um, look, if you like these sort of desperate situations and you feel lucky, you get a couple bad rolls as the Defender here, a sniper that comes in, uh, even though their sniper is only a two. I've seen snipers at two hit more than snipers at four. Um, you come in, you lose a couple of these guys to snipers. A leader gets killed and then it breaks a couple of guys that they're stacked with. It's just, it's just a mess. Whereas the attacker in this scenario has 12 squads and three leaders. Attackers got more resources. They, they can stand a few more off the parabolic curve outlying results on their guys. 
And they're probably likely to pick up more such results, you know, battle hardening and things like that. So automatically, I wouldn't play this in a tournament. And I don't even know if it'd be fun enough for me to play. I, I just don't like playing with less than 10 squads on, on a side. I just don't. SM7, one-man wrecking machine. This is barely adequate. I don't know who the one-man wrecking machine is. There's no hero here. Uh, but uh, looks like it's in a nice compact area. Five and a half turns uh, on one of the maps. Eight squads plus some stuff, some dummies. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's marginal for me, but I would play that. I'd play that. SM7. SM8, without thought of numbers. Okay. Uh, well, apparently not, as the Americans only get five squads again. Um, and the Ger Oh, at least the Germans get ten of these 537 beauties and a tank. Um, see, this kind of scenario, you've got one anti-tank gun that can definitely kill the tank. You've got one tank. So what's the deal here? Uh, you know, plan on losing your tank to the anti-tank gun, or do you want to get lucky and move on the other side of the region of setup so that the AT gun is in a bad spot? Um, just not a lot of choices here. I don't think I would play SM8 myself. Okay, SM9, Confusion Reigns, just for old time's sake, I would play this. 10 German squads, none of the funky 537s, 12 American squads. This looks uh, very historical uh, on the OB. Uh, obviously, the map isn't going to be the same. So, good. Uh, all right, then we have SM10. This is a big one. The Germans have 18 squads plus a number of vehicles. The Americans have 20-some oh, squads. Oh, look at that. Uh, now, the Germans have some stuff coming in on the back side here. And I wonder, this looks like... Uh, that's the Americans and the Germans. Where are the American reinforcements? I don't see them. Americans got to win against this huge force. Uh, wow. Well, the Americans start with a huge force, so they're going to have to take out the smaller force. Then the rather large German force comes in, is actually set up on the map, and another large force comes in as a reinforcement. I'll have to check this one out. Uh, oh, sorry. Wait a second. I'm messing this up here. Uh, excuse me. This is... This, okay. This backside here is for SM11. SM10 is intact on its own. So this looks pretty good. Um, they win a game end by controlling all buildings within two hexes um, and exiting. So tough VC for the attacker. All right. And then, yes, the backside of this is Ridsway's mission. And the Americans start on map with... Uh, 25 some 747s. That's some powerful stuff. The Germans start with 22 squads on the map and get about 20 squads and some vehicles coming in. This uses two of the three maps the NE map and the SA map. Wow. Okay. Not really sure what all these maps are. Um, I'd have to look at it. Anyway. That looks like a nice meaty scenario that you can sink your teeth into, but it's long. Wow. SM11 is 18 turns. Not really sure I like these ones that drag on well past 10 turns. Um, goodness sake. Okay. Um, Confusion Reigns, 7 turns. ASL SM10, 7.5 turns. That's good. All right. Yeah, overall, I'm going to give this a pretty high score on this module. I love new maps, scenarios related to those maps. There's a campaign game as well. There's a campaign game 1, 2, and 3 from June 6th through June 7th. Campaign chart, map, nice. Okay. Very, very impressive. Okay. So, well, thanks for listening to that. And I'm going to put this away. All right, let's break out quickly. I really don't want to do two um, videos, especially a small video on a scenario pack. Um, I got this scenario pack 
I needed to flesh out a, a big shipment from a game company in the United States. They were giving free shipping over here to the U USA. And I actually saved probably 100 pounds after spending 350 pounds. <laughs> But I did save some money, so sorry for to my usual purchasing company. But you know, every now and then you get a break from these companies overseas, and even if I paid full price on the customs, which I had to pay 20% VAT, it was still cheaper. All right, we are opening up. Hazardous movement. Not so sure how much of a fan I am, but I do like. Uh, this idea of Civil Wars scenarios. And although it's easy if you want to cheese your way to owning scenario packs by getting somebody to copy them for you, um, I'm a big fan of, like, let's spend the money. These guys put, I mean, this is nice. Look at this nice folder here. What is this? Oh, yeah. Um, Hasmo Pack. To the Uncivil Wars. I guess there's another pack I need to get. Oh, okay. All right, so they have some special rules in this little folder. This is quite nice. Unfortunately, this folding system is not compatible with my existing system. So I'll probably have to pull them out, but I, I really like this. This is uh, classy. And... They come with this sort of summary sheet, which I do like. Ch Chuck Hammond and Chad Cummins, well done. Yeah, they have, uh, this is like uh, Best of Friends, I think, does this too. Um, Hasmo, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah. And they have little pictures of what's going on, little summary of each one of the scenarios. Then on the back here of this uh, play card, what is this thing called? Uh, that thing's... The camera is opposite to me, but it makes the reading to you correct. But I can't. I'm having trouble steering my uh, document here. Okay, so these are multi-applicable scenario parameters. Let's check them out. No quarter and hand-to-hand -hand C are in effect. Only the attacker may declare it, regardless of ambush status. All right. Uh, a commissar functions the same manage uh, in the same way as an 1142 pre 1142 Russian commissar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, vehicle crews are always of the same nationality as the site under which the vehicle is listed. Okay, so for example, T26 listed in the Republican OB will have Russian. I'm sorry, will have Republican, not Russian crews. You know, I question that. I happen to know that a lot of times Russian crews were involved in some of these things, or maybe it was Russian pilots in the aircraft. Um, communist rules, Chinese. There must be a wide variety of civil wars going on here. Uh, use Italian counters to represent Moroccan regulars fighting on behalf of the Spanish nationalists. Yeah, the, yeah you know what? I'm not really sure that that's to reasonable representation, the the Moroccan regulars, I think, were actually stronger and fought harder than some of the regular Spanish troops. Uh, but they do treat them as uh, stealthy and a hand-to-hand -hand CC modifier. They were very good at this. Uh, yeah, nice. Okay. Um, use allied minor counters to represent Spanish Republicans. And Axis Minor counters represent Spanish nationalists. All right. I can live with that. So we got uh, how many scenarios then? Should be H11 through H20. H11. Let's do a quick scan here of these. Yeah, look at the production values of these. This is just really nice. Ah! Look at that. I'm going to have a new butt hurt. Uh, badge. I can reduce this and put it up on my uh, as one of my badges. I need, I always need to have at least one, only one badge because I won't be able to see. But I could have one of these reduced. Scan this and reduce it, and I can use this as a badge for my my glasses. What do you think of that, Stu? 
Okay, so I want to you know take a look at the production value of just one of these scenarios. Now look at this. All right, you want to you want to send a copy of this to your friend by you know scanning it in a black and white or making a photocopy, fine. But you know what? Don't do it. Look at this. They spent some money on this printing, and even if it was in China or wherever they got it, at least you know it looks really good. And MMP because they're MMP. They don't need to do that, right? They can just go ahead and put, let's see if I can dig in here. Yeah, look at how old school this is. This is awful, huh? Come on, MMP. I mean, I know third party, are they're, they're, they're actually making extra profits so they can afford to make these kinds of things. But I mean, look at this, come on. I mean, it's serviceable. It's serviceable, but it's really old school. You know, games aren't being produced like that anymore. You need to you need to up your game MMP. You really do. Just you know. Anyway, I think so. Okay, so the beleaguered capital. I like the looks of this. Of course, I'll probably be disappointed when I see some elements. But uh, um, yeah, now these. Uh, okay, so here we have these little changes they make. I don't know if this is really necessary to prevent Hasbro from coming after you. But instead of saying victory conditions, it says path to victory. Okay. Path to victory. The Nationalists win a game end if the Republican player cannot trace any contiguous line of road hexes. Oh, man, it's a road hex one. Those are tough. These can be tough. All right. Um, yeah, so each side gets a couple of vehicles. Each side gets at least 10 squads. This is this is fine. Kind of a lot of SSRs for my taste. Not too bad. I hate it when the SSRs start drifting into two columns worth. This has five, so they're all in the same column, so that's okay. Um, beleaguered Capital, Spanish Civil War. All right, H-O, Hazmat 12, Foreign Legions. This is also... Well, this is really foreign. <laughs> they got Italians and other stuff. Oh, those are the Moroccans. Okay, I'm not so sure how much the Moroccans stacked with the the regular Spanish. I thought they were acted as their own independent forces. But yeah, another nice one. Um, yeah, 16 squads, seven and a half turns. You've already heard what I have to say about victory conditions. So here they got to control some buildings. Probably will wind up in some last-minute charges if it's a good scenario, which I, you know, I hated when two good players they have to win by getting lucky with a last-minute charge. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, it's unfortunate. Here we go. Tin men in Tianmen. All right, Chuck. Tin men in Tianmen. A little too cute for me. Sorry. Wait a minute. Butt hurt. I got my butt hurt when I read this title, Ten Men in Ten Men. But the title is not the scenario, and they have plenty of squads here. Six turns, ten squads each, at least on each side. Very colorful. Uh, look at this. And we got a lot of colors on there. I love that, really. I don't know if it makes the scenario any better, but wow. Okay. Good. So far, so good. A Sisyphean task. Sisyphian task. This is Greece. Uh, 1948. Greece in 1948. Oh. Well, um, I'll take a look at that later here, but uh, it looks like a partisans kind of scenario. There's not enough of those. Good for you guys for putting a partisan scenario together. So far, very impressed with this. Now, I haven't looked on Roar to see what the one loss record is for these yet. Okay, sticks and stones. Sticks and stones. Oh, yeah, I should probably not have St. Marigliese up here. Here. Uh, now, my background should probably be, maybe I'll, I'll edit this and change the background to uh, hazmat. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, uh, sticks and stones, hazmat 15. Enough. So now, uh, I'm really impressed. Now, this has you know, a huge number of SSRs for a smallish scenario. Uh, the Republican forces may not deploy, suffer from ammo shortage. Uh, they can do this. They can do that. Uh, no. 
Oh, they have rock rules, stick of dynamite rules. Um, this is a a bit of a caricature. Uh, this, I guess, was the battle of. Um, well, you know, I'm sure that the research on this was really well done. I just wouldn't like all these SSRs. This is the only one I'd say, you know what? Um, I'll play the other nine first. Okay. Ooh, l'inferno fascista. I don't know how good my Italian is. It's probably not very good. But the Italian, the inferno of the fascista. So that means what? We probably have a flamethrowing tank or something? Yes, we have a flamethrowing tank, and it's a pretty good one, BF-32. However, the armor's a bit thin, and they got some tanks and machine guns. I don't know if that'll make it. They're going to have to keep that on the move. One of the way to save these uh, flamethrowing tanks that are small, and they, this is a double star small. And keep it in motion, it'll fire at half firepower, but there won't be any TEM. And maybe you can avoid getting hit by something, but even a light machine gun or something, light mortar can take this thing out. Uh, 11 squads on one side. Yeah, meets the criteria. Okay. Good. So far, amazing. All right. Stack them high. Okay. Stacking them high. Wow, look at that. How colorful these guys are. Look, look at this. That's amazing. Um, the SSRs are not amazing. You've got seven SSRs, almost two thick columns of this. Uh, I don't even want to think about this. This one, plenty of squads. That's okay. The SSRs are a bit much, though. Um, there are actually some scenarios these days that you find every now and then when the SSR is ECR moist with no wind at start. Wow. One SSR. When's the last time you saw a scenario like that, eh? Anyway, thumbs up on Hazmat 17. Here's Hazmat 18. All right, they're going. In, oh, this must be a Chuck one again. Yeah, because Chuck had the Sisyphean task here, and now he's got the Sophoclean tragedy. And this is another Greek scenario. However, this one, interesting, has some British forces that look like they need rescuing. Some really interesting scenarios here. Yeah, I think that what comes with the territory, though, is when you have a well-researched scenario, you have SSRs up the yin-yang. Uh, that's just one thing you have to deal with, though. But plenty of squads, no problem. It's going to be compact terrain. It's going to be a bloody, bloody fight. Nice. Nice one, Chuck. Nice one. All right. Okay. Wait, that was 18. Now we got, now we're to Mao. Mao's filthy column. That's what it says, right? I better put on my glasses. Mao's stinky, filthy Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm seeing double. Mouth's fifth column. Excuse me. So we got Mao versus the Nationalists. 15 squads. Oh, 25 squads. Mao's got, I guess they're long marching it. Wow. What in the world? Strange looking scenario. Um... Mount's got assault engineers mounted on Japanese tanks here. <laughs> okay, but, you know, it meets all my criteria. I'm going to have to play it eight turns long. Nice. Really, really, really nice. Oh, Hazmat 18 had a special, something special about Hazmat 18 on the back of 19. Some mobile reserves, so I guess they couldn't squeeze that. You, know, you can't squeeze in the whole thing on the scenario card when your SSRs are dripping off the page. Like, uh, like what? Tinsel from a Christmas tree. It's not a very good metaphor. All right. That would be an analogy anyway. I use the word like. Okay, so here's Hazmat 20. Is that it? Hazmat 20? 
I count that right. Anyway, Hazmount 27 turns. Okay, we've got the, the Chinese versus the Nationalists. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy with this. Other than the overdone SSRs here. Look at this. Here's some more SSRs for Hazmat 19. Oh, my God. Okay, Hazmat 19. I thought it was not bad with five SSRs. And you look on the back of this, it's got four more massive SSRs or three more. All right. Other than the SSRs, guys, over at Hazmat, um, I'm pretty happy with that, uh, that one there. Um, let me just do something here. I'm going to pause this for a second. Hi, folks. I just flipped this over to the Roar page here. I wanted to take a look at this. My face is too big here. Let's move it. Here's pack of three. Pack two was on Civil Wars. Pack one was a World at War. Okay. So here's the one loss uh, record for hazardous movement. Five and 12, nine and five, one and six. Uh, I see two dogs in here. So far, possible dogs. Uh, Sisyphean Task. And La Inferno Fascista. Yeah, the Inferno Fascista doesn't look good for the Italians. And if that's because they're the ones with the flamethrowing tank, yeah, uh, that's why. Uh, because the flamethrowing tank, if it's an essential element here for them to win, you know, you target the flamethrowing tank, game over. That's really what's unfortunate. They should give them two. What's the, what's the balance provision? Uh, remove the OBA Republican hero? Come on, man. No. You need to give him another flamethrowing tank so that you know they can have a chance to make it to the front line, would be my guess as to why L'Inferno Fascista right here. Let's use our high-tech... And Fanano Fascista, look at this. That's got to be because the flamethrowing tank doesn't make it. I mean, the other two tanks that comes with. But, you know, you got a 45L tank coming in that can blow that out. And almost, they've got one, two, three. Let's not even count the 40 millimeter mortar. One, two, three. You got two CMG tanks that are there. Uh, that's five, and those you can kill on the side with a four or five at range six. That tank's going down. All these Italian uh, tin tanks are going down. There's nothing they can do about that. Um, so, you know, you need another one or something to fix this. I don't know. Maybe they've come out with some errata since then. Uh, hard to say. Um, the other one, stack them high. Not a lot of playing. The Sophoclean Tragedy. Probably hasn't been played very much because nobody can pronounce it. I don't even know if I would say it right. Sophocles. Sophoclean. Sophoc I think that's right. Sophoclean. Sophoclean. Yeah? All right. Mao's fifth column. Some of these haven't been paid very much. Huh. It's an interesting balance of the ones that have been played. I would say there's only two that are questioned. Tin men and Tian men. Uh, well, again, you know, this, this happens a lot with these partisan scenarios. They never really figure out that the partisans need about twice as many troops as they ever give them for them to have a chance. So, Tin Men and Tiananmen. Uh, let's see if I can find the Tin Men scenario. The beleaguered capital. Sophie Cleon. Tragedy all. Come on, where's the tin men? Ah. Yeah, okay, so balance provisions. Oh, they call them parity provisions. Excuse me. Got to put on the butthurt. I made a mistake. Glasses. Oh, wait. No, that's a hat. I don't have my hat here. I need to... I, that's right. There's a hat for mistakes. There's a set of glasses for making fun of ASLers who take themselves too seriously. Probably should wear that most of the time. Okay, so here we go. Uh, parity, add an ATR to the communist OB. Uh, okay, yeah, that might help. Um, 
There's just these two tanks here. I don't know if those are going in and doing vehicle bypass freeze or something. Um, it's about controlling the bridge and the row house. Hmm. I like the VC on this. This has a lot of potential here. Uh, I don't know if an ATR is enough. It looks like there's, especially if the partisans are not allowed to use multi-location fire groups. So they're not allowed to do this. They're not allowed to deploy. There's usually a lot of dumb rules for partisans. They're already bad enough at 337s. Um, let's see. Japanese can't do bonsai charges. Okay. Yeah, I'd say for this one, without even looking at the map, give them, uh, with that kind of one loss ratio i know it's early but maybe they need another platoon a platoon with the atr maybe they'd have a chance on this one all right but okay so that's a review here of that um maybe just for fun we should uh take a look at, oh let me get the, this let's look at uh we need to use find and exit let's look at saint Sante, Mariglis, why isn't it going? Oh. There it is, drop zone Saint Mariglis. Let's take a look at it, boys and girls. Okay, all those girls that play ASL, we know how many there are. All right, let's look at these balance provisions. Uh, lost opportunities. I want to see confusion reigns. Ugh. Eight and one. Come on. Oh, that's just terrible that the uh, Americans find it so easy to win that. Mm. Too bad. Uh, what other dogs are there? That's a dog. Possible dog. Not enough playings, really. Possible dog. These don't have a lot of playings yet. Uh, these are all okay up here. This is a possible dog. Raf's distress. I think I talked to you about that one. Um, okay. Well, this is not an unusual distribution of scenario results. I mean, they play tests as much as they can, but you know they don't have some. There's a lot of uh, scenario hacks out there, and I say they're hacks, but that's because they hack the scenario and they have special things that no other player saw, and they have special tricks that they like to use that uh, most people don't understand, like moving through concealment markers in bypass or uh, torching, doing flames. Um, flame, I know, I'm not a big fan of being able to put flames anywhere you want. Um, uh, of course, the one clue that one guy says, as to, of course, says, hey, you know, if uh, there's kindlings allowed and the EC are dry, they're expecting you to kindle. And maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. The scenario designers are expecting you to set some kind of fire. And uh, he's right. He's actually absolutely right. All right. That's it. I'm glad that you were here. If you listened to all of this and you liked it, please, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Uh, if you didn't like it and you hung out this entire time listening to this diatribe, well, thank you for that as well. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.